It's a rare moment that you get to see my face, which means that I have potentially found something pretty amazing. I think that I might have just found the biggest hammered coin that I have ever discovered. So stay tuned because you won't want to miss it. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. So, another field and another newly harvested field. Now this is a barley field that's just been harvested and they, uh, they haven't bothered to bale it, they've just chopped it up and they've spat out all the straw, which is why it's all covered in straw. Uh, I'm going to go across this field to get to another field, um, and that's the field that produced the uh, dagger chape and the George II silver and the big, what may be medieval, but maybe a Roman weight because I am sure that there is more to come. I've only got a couple of hours at best. I'm on my own because I've not invited anyone else. So let's see what we get. Again, we're in with a really quick signal in the first 60 seconds. Eighty-five, eighty-six. And I have to say, sounds like a coin all day long. Let's see what we get. Well, so much for that one. What sounded like a coin and quite a small target was in actual fact <laughs> absolutely massive. I found a I found a pound or a about 450 grams of either copper or brass or a bit of both. Um, it's a tap. It's uh, for irrigation. Obviously someone, the farmer, has been irrigating his crops and he has lost his tap. So, doesn't work. So, I'll get, weight, get that weighed in for scrap. Oh well. It just shows you that a field is never done because I'm 90 seconds in and I've got my second diggable signal. So it just shows you what a field um, with a plough going through it at 18 to 24 inches, one and a half to two foot can do. A field that you've done to death. We've got a 89 to 90 and dare I say, it's either a coin or an irrigation tap. You know what I'm like, I always forget something. And guess what I forgot this time? My pinpoint probe. But it was an easy spot. It's a bottle top. I'm guessing probably a crimped whiskey bottle top. And uh, I don't see any sort of letters or advertising on it so I think it's a plain variety but my guess is probably sometime between 1850 and 1950 but ultimately junk. This one coming through at a solid 66. It's either going to be a a bit of lead, a button, or maybe a spendable, but let's find out. It was pretty shallow, came out thankfully in the top three or four inches. Gonna have to use the old fashioned method, which is that. That's what we used to do in the day before pinpointers, and I have got it in my hand as well as a load of straw. It's not in that hand, so somewhere, there we go, it's right there. It's not there, because it's there. And we have got, possibly, a coin. We have 
It's a two pence. It looks like it could be Elizabeth the second, the present queen. Oh, it's actually a ten pence, not a two pence. Look at how quickly they corrode. So this was bright silver when it was made. Ten new pence, or words to that effect. And Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of the Britons, defender of the faith. But no Empress of India, because they gained their independence in 1947. And uh, I could spend this, so maybe I'll go and treat myself. Excellent. We have another signal, signal number three. Coming through at a solid 86, which is definitely coin territory, but I've not exactly covered myself in glory so far, so we only way to find out is to dig the hole. And we might actually have a coin, an old coin, not a spendable coin, right there. Do you see that? That looks like, possibly, a penny. It came out about somewhere between five and six or seven inches down. And I don't really see much in the way of detail. Nope. Right. Let's see if we can bring it to life with the uh, spray bottle and the magic thumb. I think that's Britannia, I can see on there. And on the other side, what have we got? Could be a head, it is a head facing to the right hand side. It's Edward the Seventh, Bertie. Right, let me give this a wee rub a dub on the trousers and then get the bendy thumb on it and bring it to life. Okay, so we've got Britannia and at the bottom we've got the date 1906, which is kind of halfway through the reign of this man, Edward the Seventh, Bertie or um, Teddy was also some people called him, but Bertie was his uh, favourite nickname. It is Edward the Seventh, the son of Queen Victoria and um, Albert, Prince Albert, and he was, um, he ruled from 1901 until 1909 or 1910, roughly. Um, he was the Playboy Prince. He smoked 400,000 cigarettes. No, sorry, he smoked um, 40 cigarettes and 20 cigars, or thereabouts, per day. I think every time I say it, I, uh, I increase the number of cigarettes that he smoked. But either way, he smoked a lot of cigarettes. He was a Playboy Prince. He had many a mistress. He waited 60 odd years for his dear mama, Queen Victoria, to die. And he wasn't even on the throne for a decade. So he's one of the rarer coins that we find. But always nice to see him. Brilliant. This one was a little scratchy signal. Came through in the sort of lower 50s to mid 50s. And it's a little bullet. It's a little lead bullet. You can see the ring mark around it. From a 2.2 calibre like a rimfire sort of rifle. Uh, not particularly old, probably less than 50 years. But it is the best find I've had in the last half an hour or so. I've managed two tin cans and a couple of uh, tractor related items and a ring pool. So we will keep on trucking. Another good signal. Pretty solid 81. Is it a small target? C 
seems to be a very small target. So maybe we've got a coin again. Let's see. Thankfully, because we're getting into the middle of the field, the ground is getting a little bit softer. We've had no substantial rain here for months. Honestly, months. It's been one of the driest years on record. And because I forgot my pinpointer, I have to do it the old-fashioned way. This is the way I used to have to... Oh, This is the way I used to have to check my... Oh, I can see it already. Right there, look. This is the way I used to have to check my finds before decent quality pinpointers came along. I actually only got my first pinpointer a couple of years ago. And that was my little Garrett carrot that I have forgotten today. Typical. Always forget something. Okay, so looks like possibly Georgian, I would say. It's a bit uneven, a bit irregular. Maybe George the Third could be George the Second. Oh, well, I think that's Britannia. I can see a sort of what looks like a big ball gown with an arm coming out there. So it could be George the First, you know. So I'm going to give it a little wash. I think someone mentioned in the comments why would a why would a wet a copper coin or well, why not would be my honest reply because. Um, I would only wash a coin that looks relatively stable. I wouldn't wash a coin that looks like it's about ready to fall apart. And in actual fact, I think it is George the First. You can see a head looking to the left. Do you see that? Well, that is a surprise. But it is a bit irregular shaped and George the First coins tend to be not perfectly circular and a little bit dome shaped in this one. You can see, hopefully in the video, it's it's not uh, it's not perfectly flat. It's got a little bit of a lump in it, just about here, which is why I wondered if it could be George the First, and it is George the First. So, George the First, there he is, looking to the left-hand side, and on the back, I've already seen the arm of Britannia. It's a bit uh, wet. Needs to dry out a little bit to bring her back to life. But take my word for it. It is George I and he ruled from 1714 until about 1726, give or take a year or two. And George I was the first of the Hanoverian kings. Uh, when Queen Anne who was the last of the Stuart kings, well, queens, technically, uh, when she was basically on her way out, they hunted high and low to find someone with Stuart blood who was not a Catholic because they'd passed the Act of Settlement, which basically meant if you were anything other than a Protestant or married anyone other than a Protestant, then you could not rule the United Kingdom. And Queen Anne had no children, so they searched high and low. And they eventually, after excluding about 160 Catholics who were better fitted to, or had more of a claim to, read, to, to lead the uh, monarchy in the United Kingdom, they eventually settled on a woman called Sophia of Hanover, the House of Hanover in Germany. And before she could be crowned queen, she was struck by lightning and died, leaving her son, George I, who by comparison was a doofus. He was a dimwit. Uh, however, George I was confirmed as the King of Great Britain, George of Hanover. And a lot of people weren't happy and the Jacobites saw that as an opportunity, so another Jacobite rebellion kicked off in 1715. But it's a nice coin, it's uh, over 300 years old, so I am a happy man.
I am on the field where I got the dagger chip and the big lead weight over the last week or two. And I've got a signal here, it's not the best. Coming through at 87, 88, but it isn't great, but I'm going to dig it anyway, see what we get. It's a rare moment that you get to see my face, which means that I have potentially found something pretty amazing. I think that I might have just found the biggest hammered coin that I have ever discovered. So stay tuned because you won't want to miss it. Why is it that the best finds always seem to come just as you're running out of daylight? Now look at the size of that hole that I've just dug. If I had a pin pointer, then I would show you how deep it is. But, you know, I've got pretty big hands and it's a hand and a half deep. I'm guessing 12 inches, could be 13, could even be 14. But do you see what I see? right there that is i believe a hammered coin i think it's a hammered coin it's definitely silver but i think it's hammered and i think it might just be the biggest hammered coin that i have ever found a faint signal you saw it came through somewhere in the 80s i can't even remember where now i almost didn't dig it if it hadn't been for the fact that I probably haven't had a signal in over half an hour, then I might have just walked on by. But I dug it and I can feel the weight in it already. I've had to put the flash on because the, it's getting so dark. It's getting so dark and look at the size of that. I can feel the weight in it. Look how thick it is. If this is a hammered coin, then it is a monster. Oh, I think it is. I think that is a hammered coin. I think it is a hammered coin. I don't think it's milled. I think it's hammered. Right. Thank God for the sunflower. A sunflower? A suntan lotion. Well done for everyone continually heckling me, telling me to bring it. That is 100% that is a hammered coin, 100% hammered, that is a monster. Oh look at that, the reverse is even better than the, than the obverse, oh my god, look at that. That is beautiful, look at the size of it. It must be either half a crown or a shilling, I think, because it's massive, absolutely massive. Right, let's get this last bit of mud off. Oh, that might actually be a stain. Right, I can see letters, I can see detail. On the back, look at that. That is a shield all day long. Please be Mary Queen of Scots. Right. I'm going to give this a rub-a-dub off camera and get back to you. It is a whopper. Look at the size of that. It is a massive silver coin. It's English. I think it's a shilling, which means it's 12 pence. Posve deum advoterum meum, I think is what the Latin is round the side. And it means something like, I have made God my helper. In the centre, you've got a shield. You've got three lions, top right and bottom left. And you've got the fleur de lis the flowers of the lily of France, bottom right and top left. 
and on the other side you can just about make out a head looking to the left hand side and the words Eliza which is Elizabeth in fact it's Elizabeth with a B Elizabeth DG de Gracia and then it says ANG England FR France ET and that bit there is worn but it would say Hibernia which is Ireland and then lastly Regina which is Queen so Queen Elizabeth of England France and Ireland and that is an absolute beauty look at the size of that coin it is massive absolutely massive and I've just dropped it down the hole <laughs> it's not like me so I have made God my helper or words to that effect and three lions of England three fleur de lis of France she ruled from something like 1558 until 1603 and most famously of all in the I'm going to guess 1587 she had her own cousin Queen Mary Queen of Scots she had her head chopped off after keeping her prisoner for almost 20 years or about 20 years but Mary Queen of Scots had the last laugh because she or at least her son James VI of Scotland who had been King of Scotland since about 1567 he became King of England he became James I of England in 1603 when Elizabeth died without children and look at the size of that coin why do I always find the best stuff right at the end just as it's getting dark I can't believe I wasn't going to dig that signal and I only dug it because I hadn't found anything for half an hour it just goes to show you the only way to find a good signal or to find out for sure dig the hole I'm sorry for having to use torchlight <laughs> to film it but uh, it's got that dark that quickly it's gone 10 o'clock at night and I can't believe it I cannot believe that that signal which you all heard it wasn't the best okay the numbers were good it was somewhere in the 80s I think it might have been 85 or 88 I can't even remember but look at that coin look at the size of it it's not being clipped barely being clipped a couple of slithers such a shame that the middle is worn but they often are because people used to rub them especially if they were ill they were um, basically expecting the the royal the queen or the king to make them feel better which is often why the middle of the coin is far more rubbed than the outside edge because on this edge you can see how good the letters are very very clear and on the back I'd say the back's even better I can make out most of the letters and the shield in the center so definitely the back is better but look at the size of that coin the weight in it is incredible it is such a chunky coin really chunky I am over the moon over the moon with that absolutely delighted so thank you all for watching I'll come back to you if I can date it to uh, a specific period in Mary uh, in Queen Elizabeth the first rule if you have any idea in the comments let me know and if you don't already then give me a subscription give me a like and I will see you on the next dig thanks for watching